Welcome back to CLE Weekend. So I want to start with a quote. That is, everyone has a story, even if we don't know what it is. And that is from a book called The Tale of the Other Glove by author Monica Berg. I'm so excited to be joined this morning by Monica to talk about this special book. So as a parent, I love this book. I love the message. And how special is it for you um, to have co-created it with your daughter, who obviously plays a very big role in terms of inspiration for the book. Uh, Monica, tell us a little bit about this. Yes, Abigail, my youngest, I have four children. She's definitely my muse. Um, it's a mix, you know, we're, we from my childhood and real life stories that are happening in hers. And I'm so inspired by the conversations we have around her upbringing and her experiences in life. And this was based on a true story that happened with her babysitter where she had an encounter with an unhoused person in a subway station. And she had a pair of gloves and she was putting them on. It was winter and she dropped one and she went to pick it up and a hand beneath her snatched it. She noticed that there was an unhoused person there that grabbed it and she said, hey, give me my glove back. And he said, no, I found it. And she said, you couldn't have found it because they didn't lose it. So she got all upset and I, I looked at her and I said, well, why don't you just give him your other glove? What does one glove do for anybody? For him, he had no glove, so one hand is better warm than, than none at all. And for you, you're gonna throw away the other pair. You're gonna go buy a new pair of gloves. And what struck me and Abigail is that I public speak and I went around speaking to different people and I would ask this question, what would you have done in that situation? And overwhelmingly, very few raised their hand in a group of hundreds of people. So I thought we were onto something and it really teaches to the power of empathy because another theme in the book is, would you rather be right or be kind? Yeah, I think it's important. You know what, I was reading the book. I love that you made some of the words that were the impactful ones big. I think even myself as a news anchor, you know, I put little stars or asterisks next to things that I want to really hit. And you did just that because seeing generosity and empathy pop up in the book as parents, right? This is something we want to teach our kids and you have done it so well and just weaved it through with this beautiful story that just ends so nice it's not good for just kids, but adults too. I agree. You know, when we went on a tour for our last book, because it's a book series, it's called On Being. And so we're hopefully writing 10 different books. And the first book is called The Gift of Being Different. And all of the children, you know, they're curious, oh, where are you going to write another book? What is it about? So I asked them, because I like to get my, my research done. I said, well, it's about the power of empathy. Who knows what empathy means? And again, very few hands were raised. And so I think that the hard things for us as we get older, right, is to practice empathy consistently, to be kind to people that we don't like very much, right? It's easy to be kind to the ones you love and be generous to those that already have a place in your heart. But what about those people? People that kind of upset us or rub us the wrong way or that confuse us or that we are afraid of, right? There's always a place that if we feel another person's pain, we're inclined to be more generous with them. And again, as we get older, it's much harder to do. But if we ingrain it in children when they're really young, that, you know, even the first day of school, right? We're going back to school and some of us have experienced being bullied. Just be curious about another child that maybe looks different to you or that you don't understand. That power of curiosity and again, that openness of heart allows us to act in ways that are unanimous with our best self. Yeah, and I think leading by example, right? I love that Abigail was kind of like, all right, mom, you know, you kept going back to that scenario throughout the night uh, that she had with her babysitter earlier in the day. And so asking those questions and as a parent, being open to be like, let's entertain every angle of this and kind of walk the kids through this because we're the ones who have a lot more knowledge and we need to help at lead by example. So I love how the story kind of takes this turn. Also, I must say this, um, I Spy is gonna take on a whole new meaning for people after they read the book. That's what I love um, about this book. And something too I thought of, you know, a lot of these parents, grandparents go into school classrooms as mystery readers. And I love this book for parents, grandparents to take in as a mystery reader because the message goes out so much more if you can touch all those kids in a classroom. Exactly. One of the other themes we have is the power of perception. If we just change our lens and to your point, one of the parts in the book, Abigail has this epiphany where she realizes that this man who's unhoused now was once a child, just like me. He had a home, he had food on the table and she doesn't know how he got to where he is, but you don't need to know in order to give, right? So it does have these 
themes that it doesn't matter what age you're at, we kind of all need that reminder. I think it's a great reminder. I read the book to my son. Uh, let's see what he thought. Hi, I'm Alan, and I really like your book. It's beautiful and fun. Um, it's very pretty in the illustrating, and it's very comfortable. It keeps me some room, and if I saw a guy like that, I would give him my gloves, and um, I would be nice to him and just give him a wave. I really like your book. I, I love you. Bye. Arlen, thank you so much. Monica, tell us, where can we get the book? You can order it off of Amazon, um, and it's in local bookstores as well. Wonderful. The Tale of the Other Glove. Monica, thank you so much. It's been great to chat with you, and I look forward to continuing to read the book to my younger son.